Hi, uh, hello my students and welcome once again to the parallel courses of economic policy and managerial economics. This time I will uh, focus on public policies in the presence of like a massive shutdown in private business and I'm going to use a real-life case that of uh, Cineworld. Cineworld is a big company a big multinational operating uh, chains of cinema theaters like across the world in Europe and in the United States and they recently announced as you will see in the slides that will follow in this video presentation that they are closing uh, at least temporarily all their cinema theaters in Britain and in the United States uh, so we'll go through that case just as a commentary if you follow other courses of mine. Right now I am using this single real-life case, Cineworld, uh, in different courses, like under different angles. I think that if you, if, if you take care to compare my different video lectures in different courses on that same case, you can gain like some understanding as for how can points of view differ regarding the same real life situation according to the theoretical perspective we adopt or the line of teaching we are following. Anyway, we go on with this one. So first of all, uh, first of all, let me magnify it. Uh, just a word of explanation before we go further. As usually, the link to this video lecture is accompanied, or this video lecture is accompanied by a PowerPoint presentation. And in that PowerPoint presentation, you can find like the real links that you see on the screen. Uh, so don't worry, you don't have to like type down those links from the screen. They are in the PowerPoint presentation. You can find them there. So. Uh, Cineworld, the chain of cinema theatres, and now in parenthesis you have the link to their investors relations site, has just announced that in response to an increasingly challenging theatrical landscape and sustained key market closures due to the COVID-19 pandemic, Cineworld confirms that it will be temporarily suspending operations at all of its 536 regal theatres in the United States and its 127 Cineworld and Picture House theatres in the United Kingdom from Thursday, October 8, 2020. And below you have the link to the full text of that specific announcement from the part of Cineworld. So this is the basic case. We have a chain of local operations, local cinema theatres, shutting down. Now the context. Uh, the picture that you can see in this slide is a picture of the neighbourhood uh, where one of those theatres subject to closure is located. It is the uh, it, it is the neighborhood of Clapham uh, Picture House in London, 76 Venn Street, Clapham Town. And uh, in the links, in the slide, you can find the full list of their cinemas and you can uh, sort of follow or, for example, with Google Maps, where those closures of local cinema theatres take place. This is like the general landscape or the general context of our case under the point of view of economic policy and managerial economics. Because the point is that when those cinema theatres close up, when they shut down, it will affect their immediate neighborhoods. It will affect the neighborhoods where they are located. Each such cinema theater is a business, is a local business. It gives jobs to people, uh, so it makes people work and it gives people a stream of income. 
it is a customer for some local suppliers, for example, uh, for suppliers of food and drinks. It is a well-known fact that cinema theatres derive most of their gross margin from uh, selling food and drinks rather than from selling tickets. Now, the general question is precisely that. Think about the so-called ripple effect when those cinemas close up. The ripple effect is something known mostly from Keynesian economics. It is that phenomenon that when one business shuts down, other businesses will shut down. It will provoke like a, like a wave, like a ripple. Uh, when, for example, a stone is being thrown into a puddle of water, it makes ripples. In the same manner, a localized economic shock, like the shutdown of a business, can provoke such a ripple, such ripples, I'm sorry, sort of around it in the economic system. So there is like a small local economy connected to each of those theaters being shut down. And now let's focus on specifically most on the United Kingdom. There are 127 places like that, uh, uh, like that. So 127 cinema theaters owned by Cineworld, which are shutting down right now. So they are vanishing like from the local economic landscapes of their neighborhood. If you needed to understand more or better uh, that ripple effect, you can, for example, turn to my two video lectures on the fundamentals of economics. You have links to, to YouTube to both, uh, to both of those lectures in the slide. And let's go further with digging on that thing. So you know that uh, you probably know or you will soon learn that uh, uh, whenever something unpleasant happens to the economic system, at least some people say, well, the government should do something about it. And now question, what can and should the British government do in order to counter the adverse impact of seen world closures? Uh, so the first question is, what do those people and those neighborhoods need from the part of the government? And what can the government possibly do and what should they do in that specific case? And I try to like unfold that central thought uh, with those sort of hints or questions. Uh, which are in the bullet points below. So I ask how to calculate the amount of money those people and neighborhoods, so they, need to compensate that adverse economic ripple. Hint number one, you can think about the impact of paying unemployment benefits to people who lost their jobs or who lost their small businesses due to that senior world closure. Hint number two, you can think that governments or the government of Britain or maybe the local governments of cities could sort of direct new capital investment into those neighborhoods. The logic there would be that if there is one set of businesses disappearing, those cinema theaters, we invest in order another, to create another set or another stream of business activity in order to, to offset and compensate those closures. And finally, hint number three, uh, should that investment be oriented on reviving the cinemas or on creating some completely new kind of businesses on the place? Now, as we are talking about policies, it is important to have like different points of view because policies and here I am specifically addressing the students of managerial economics who had with me the class of political systems. You probably already know or understand that public policies can very easily go south 
they can r r r really quickly get out of hand and transform into something monstrous that they were absolutely not intended to be in the first places. So play the devil's advocate and uh, ask yourself about the possible negative outcomes of public support for those neighborhoods where those cinemas shut down. Because there is like a whole stream of economic doctrine and economic theory which claims that essentially economic systems should be left alone, that governments shouldn't meddle, that economic systems are perfectly able to balance themselves. And uh, what the governments can do, or the best that uh, governments can do, is not to disturb that adaptation. So, play the following scenarios in your mind. First of all, the scenario when public aid goes to waste. So, for example, people take unemployment benefits but do not actively seek other jobs or other type of business activity. Another negative, adverse scenario is that public aid goes embezzled. So capital investment from the government gets under control of people who embezzle funds, so who essentially use those funds in unethical, opportunistic ways, uh, which are in discord uh, with the essential economic purpose of that aid. So they redirect that, those funds into their private projects, for example, which happens all the time. Mm -hmm. Uh, and the third negative or adverse scenario that you can play in your mind is that public aid drones in, in or drowns in, in bureaucracy. So the money is there, the money is available, it should be used, but the bureaucratic machine slows down the whole process and directs that money into non-optimal uses. And try to think how to counter those possible flaws. Try to think about public policies which would play like the positive role and in the same time would be shielded against those negative scenarios. And now we can take an even like broader view on that thing. So we can ask ourselves uh, whether it is just about COVID. Uh, so we can ask ourselves uh, whether that shutdown of cinema theatres belonging to Cineworld is really the outcome of the pandemic and just of the pandemic, or maybe there is something else. Maybe, quite simply, the cinema business is folding down under the pressure, for example, of streaming services and uh, all forms of digital entertainment, such as Netflix. So maybe the pandemic has just uh, sped up uh, that folding down of the cinema business. Maybe it has exposed some weaknesses which were there, but they were sort of uh, uh, not very visible as long as the economy was going well. So, in that case, reaffecting the same places to other uses, so reaffecting those buildings and those structures to offices, clinics, maybe something even else, could have a better long term economic impact on their neighborhoods. In that case, what should the government do? Okay, so that's the first, like, real life practical case in economic policy. You have a real life tough nut to crack for the British government because 127 neighborhoods across Britain suddenly left without a specific local business that was there, the cinema theater. It can be an economic problem of like a sensible and significant magnitude. And the government will be expected to do something about it. And the question for you is what rationally should they do about it? Okay, it is about all in this video lecture on the real case of Cineworld, seen under the angle of economic policies. 
And as usually in the conclusion uh, of each of my video lectures, I wish you to have fun with science and to have fun with life. Oh, in the description box below the video, you will find the link to the PowerPoint presentation that I was using in the video. Bye.